Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this washed faceted gift bag because it is basically a larger size of the faceted gift bag that I made about a year and a half ago and I will link that one up here because that's tall, a lot thinner and it's made with one piece of A4 or it might have even been letter paper size, I'm not sure, but if you want to make something smaller, but this same style, go check that video out. So it's basically that one, but I, like I said, I've made it bigger. So this is using two pieces of 12 by 12, so it's considerably bigger. Sorry, my focus went funny then with all the, the mirrored card there, but it's it's a really wide, you can see just how lovely it is. And then inside, let me just open this up here. You can see there all that space you have. So yeah, it's it's really easy to make. I've broken all the steps down as always. I've used the lovely um, new Dovecraft papers, which I'll show you in a moment. And I've got a little wooden kind of embellishment there. I've got a little metal star here. One of the um, cutouts that I've just, uh, I've cut that out from one of the papers. It's along with these little tree decorations and then the papers there with all that lovely sparkle on them. And I just, yeah, I love how it turned out. I've actually also, this was some ribbon, but I didn't like it on its own. So I've just done a plait with the ribbon and I just thought it just looked really nice um, as handles for the bag. So yeah, let me show you how to make this unusual gift bag. So this is the Dovecraft collection, it's Twilight Wishes and I use this to make the star card which I know many of you enjoyed. It's a beautiful, very, very rich paper pad. It's got real deep Christmas colours um, with the gold foiling there running through it and it's lovely. I've used some of the embellishments to go with it, so I use the metal star, so I'm going to use that again. You also get buttons, I've used one of the wooden shapes here which is the tree decoration. The pegs as well, I did put a few pegs on but I changed my mind. I've used the bows and you also get these sticker sheets as well so there's lots in the collection. And then I used for the embossing on this one here which is that woven basket look and that is using the woven basket. This is the 3D embossing folder by Gemini Crafters Companion. I will link it below, it's lovely, really really nice one. But for this one I'm using this here which is a, I want to say it's an X cut, it might be do crafts. It says design objectives. I've got a feeling it might be do crafts. Again, I'll try and find some links to it, but it's just this unusual pattern. I just quite liked it, so that's the one I'm using today. So I've gone ahead and done all of that kind of stuff off camera because you don't need me. You don't need to see me do that. I've also done one side. So this is what we're going to be aiming to achieve. You're going to have two pieces that look like this. So that's that one all ready to go. Now also I've already done my second one because I'm using a very light cardstock. It doesn't pick up very well on my camera. So I thought I'm going to do this one here using a marker and a ruler. And I think you guys then will be able to see it much better and make more sense of it. So you want two pieces of 12 by 12 card. If it's directional pattern, make sure it's facing the right, right way up now. So the first score line you're going to do is at 11 and a half, okay, all the way down. You're also then going to put a little notch with your stylus at five and three quarters, okay, just there. But for the purposes of the video, I'm also just going to put a little black mark there, okay. I'll probably go over this line in a minute as well if you see that change, just so you can really see where all the score lines are. Then rotate it and you want to score at three and one eighth of an inch and six and a quarter. Okay. Pop it back again into the original orientation. Flip it, okay, and score at five and three quarters past the first score line and down to the second. Okay, and then flip it back again. What you can then do is go over that, it's just easier then getting a ruler out and hovering your stylus over here before you get to that first score line. But that way, you know, it's not going to damage your cardstock and then you've got your score lines in the right direction. Okay, so that's all the scoring you need to do with the scoreboard. Okay, so I've just gone over those score lines, so that's what you want to have at the minute. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to score from here, the centre of this bottom piece, to the score line there and from there to the top there, okay? Again, I'm gonna use my pen, but you will be scoring this. So you wanna use a metal ruler and a stylus and just score your score line there. Okay, then you're gonna score from your pencil mark or your notch from there to there and there to there. Okay, so that's now what you should have. Then you want to do one score line just in this triangle here. Don't do it in that one. 
I'm just using my T-square ruler because it's good that I can just use it to make sure the ruler's straight because I just line it up along the top of the cardstock. But you want to do a score line from the centre of this cross here just to the top. Remember these are all score lines. Now if you want to do a template like that as well then you can do. I will take a picture of this and I'll put it on my blog. Okay. Then you want to fold and burnish all of the score lines so you will be able to fold all of these score lines. Okay, Even all of these and I'll show you that in my one in a moment. And then I've already gone and cut that one as well. So what you want to do is you want to remove this section here and you want to just cut up this line here, just to there. Okay, I'll do it a little bit darker. I'm going to show you my one in a second, but I just think it's much clearer for you to see on here what you will have. So you're going to cut just up there and you're going to remove that section there. Everything else you want to burnish. Okay, I'll hold it there so you can just pause the video. Right, so here is my one, so you can see now where I've folded all of my score lines and burnished them. You can go down this one here up to that point, okay, because it won't go all the way through, it just needs to go up to there. You can see I've cut that bottom piece and I've just removed that one. Take a little wedge off of that piece as well just to take off any, you know, so you don't get anything overhanging. So you want to have two pieces like this. Next you want to cut your decorative paper. So you're going to need four pieces of three and seven eighths of an inch and these are going to go like this. Now you can only stick one down on each piece because the next one will go across here and it will go across the join when everything's put together. So stick one down just like I've done here and keep the other one to the side okay because you will stick that one down you can see I've got this one ready because that's going to join here and then we will stick that there. Okay, so you'll have those spare, and that's my two spares there, and that one is going to stick there. Then you want four pieces that are three and three quarters squared, because these are going to go in all these triangles. So with these pieces here, so again you'll have four, I've already stuck mine onto the other piece. Pop them in a diamond orientation and just cut from point to point, okay. So once you've done this on all four pieces, you'll have eight triangles. And those eight triangles will cover all of these triangles. So you're not, apart from where you scored, that one there, you won't put nothing in. To be fair, you can if you want. If you want to decorate that, then you'll want to do another, um, well, just another two of this size, but you'll probably have to go smaller again and then cut through there. So you've got separate triangles. Because you wouldn't want to just stick that there, it'd be too much kind of bulk when you fold it, but you could certainly do two separate ones. But these ones are going to go, one's going to go here, one's going to go there, one's going to go there. Hold on, I want to make sure I get this right because I think I've put it together. No, so you don't want to do that one. So you don't want to do what I've done with that one there, ignore that because I'm going to go over that again now. So actually you only need three because you're going to have that when we put that one together, like so, and then that one will go over the other side that's just off the, the camera there. But you should, if I just bring this along, you can see how it's going to look. Okay, so you should just have three, unless you're going to do smaller triangles, these ones here. So I'm going to stick down, all you want to be sticking is that. Okay, so ignore. You'll have one of these left over where you've cut that. So you could cut that in half and fill it in there. So anyway, I'm going to go and stick all these ones down. Okay, so I've just stuck them down. Also, this cardstock is from the Light Textures pack, which I got from the range in their mix and match. They're £3 a pack, so I did buy a few because they're perfect for backgrounds and things like this. And they're also a really nice weight. They're 250 um, GSM. So that's with this, which is 160. This is the paper, I think. Oh, 150. I wasn't far off. I'm getting really good at guessing my weights now. Um, and then mixed with the, the cloud glue in between. This has become very, very strong. Um, so, so yeah, it is a very nice, strong gift bag. Next, we want to do these bits here. So all of this, all the measurements that I give you, you'll need four of each, okay? One for each of the four sides. So, so the first gold mat is two and seven eighths of an inch by five and a half. 
Then I have a pattern paper in between and that is two and five eighths of an inch by five and a quarter. And then the other gold on top is two and three eighths of an inch by five. So I've dropped down by quarter of an inch increment each time. So I've got a nice even border. And you're gonna stick them in these rectangles at the bottom. So again, it should all look like that. You just need to ignore that I've stuck that one on there. So basically this will end up going over the top. So it's just gonna cover it anyway, so it'll be okay. So again, I'm just gonna go and get them stuck down. Okay, so you will now have two pieces like that because you would have already cut all of this as well. Next we want to stick them together, so I'm just going to grab my glue and pop it along this tab here. And then I'm just going to sit this over the top. Always make sure your base score line is lined up, that's the most important one because you can always trim the top if need be, but you won't be able to correct it if the base isn't lined up. So I'm just going to push that up a little bit. I'm just going to fold that under, that way I can check that I do have it. It's quite hard to see this cardstock. I'm going to add glue to this one. Now usually you can fold your gift bags in half again, but because we've got this diamond through the middle, you basically have to just lift your tab up and then drop this down on top and it should all square off nicely. Just spend a minute, just make sure that you get that perfectly all lined up. Okay, so I think we're okay. So I'm just gonna open this up. And you wanna make sure that you've got it squared off at the bottom, okay? Get that into place first. And then what's gonna happen is the two sides where you scored down the triangle, you want to push so they're inside like that. That will then become the top. And make sure that this is all squared off. Everything else will start to fall into place. And what I would say is kind of push these diamonds in so they kind of curve inside there just slightly. You see they've ever so slightly got a curve. Make sure you've got that on all of them and the whole box will just fall into place. Okay. And then we'll get the, the base secure because that's the most important part. And once that's kind of, like I said, all squared off, everything else will fall into place. So now the base will just kind of overhang each other by quarter of an inch, okay? So you always want to, well, decide what you want to be the front. I'm going to have this one because I'll, just in case that doesn't line up properly. So this is going to be the front for me. So I'm going to fold in these two first and I'm just going to run a little bit of glue down there just so that grips onto that and then I'm going to put glue all on these two sides here and then we're also going to reinforce it and cover it with some more decorative paper because you'll see usually we have a piece of cardstock that's the whole kind of size of your base to cover but because of the way I've done this and I didn't want to have to you know I wanted it to be this size this is the, how I had to do the base so but it's good because you can certainly put something, you know, pretty heavy in this um, because of the way it's been made and because we're going to obviously reinforce it. So we're going to cut another piece of cardstock to sit perfectly over that and also inside if you want, that's optional. You could also lay down some very heavyweight cardstock or chipboard. Again, that will just help um, reinforce it if you do have something quite heavy to go inside. So I'm just making sure all that glue is spread out. So pop those two sides, so always make sure they're in. I mean, you could have them out. Again, it does give it a different look. That's the look you get. So if you've got your triangles, if you did end up covering them, there's you know no reason why you can't have it that way. You know, I like that a lot of the bags I do, you can, you can change the look just by, you know, doing something as simple as this, folding it in or out. But I wanna keep mine in, because I just, I love that shape. Then with these other two pieces that you will have, one is gonna stick on there, okay? and that just brings it all together. And then for me, the other one will go on the back and hopefully, yeah, it should cover that one perfectly. So I'm gonna stick those both down. Okay, so I've got away with the back there and there is the front. Okay, I've got some of these handles here which I just saved from some of my bags. And what I'm gonna do is just add a couple of holes. You can add obviously ribbon, you can have actual cardstock 
handles which I've done on the last gift bag I think it was I put up there's some really nice handbag styles that you can use on the boat bag that would look really nice on this as well but I'm going to use the probably going to need the larger yeah I'll need the larger ones so I'm going to pop them just kind of I'm coming in I'd say about half an inch from the corner of the patterned corner there so I'm going to pop this one out there it's entirely up to you just make sure that you, know, you shouldn't go through these side pieces because they're further down but um, again I'm going to eyeball this there we go and pop that one through there Okay, so there are my handles now, so I really love that. Next I want to do my little fastening and make my decorative dangle. Okay, so I forgot to push record, but don't worry, you haven't missed anything. So I've stuck down the, well, you've missed me stick this down, and I've also stuck my base. So these, the square inside there is five and, five and five eighths of an inch squared. So I've got one in there and I've got one on the base. Okay, so that's nice and strong. So there's three layers of cardstock there now. And then my closure here, so the cardstock is three by one and three quarters and then this, uh, my gold cardstock is two and three quarters by one and a half. Stick them on top of each other and just round off the edges. Then I put glue covering about half an inch and stuck it on the back there. And then I've just put my 20 mil hook and loop dot there and then that's just kind of finds its way, just stick them. So you want it to kind of sit in the middle there, which it does. And then the dangles here are just fussy cut from this paper here. So there's a big 12 by 12 sheet of all these lovely tree decorations. I just cut them out. Then I stuck them on top of some gold card and then cut them out again, hole punch them. And then I've just tied three of them on there and just tied off all the edges. Cause now I'm going to attach this one here with one of the little stars from this one. And I'm also going to pull off one I'm going to have one of them behind, so I'm going to thread that through first, pop a little bit of glue on there, but I'm going to cut all this away anyway, so I'm going to pop that one, then the Merry Christmas, and then the star. Okay, so you can just see, and once we position it, that one will kind of stick out a little bit, and then I'm going to tie it all on top of this, and I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue just to kind of keep it where you want it to stay, because this will obviously move around, but I want to make sure that all of that obviously stays in place. I'm just going to tie it off quite tight at the top there but then I'm going to move this so you start to see it all and I'm going to knot that again and I'm going to finish it with one of the gold bows on top again so let's just trim all that off and that will all be covered by one of these bows which again is from the same collection so I'm just going to pop some hot glue just on the ends and just kind of rub it all in that will stop any of this unraveling because all of these gift bags I'm making now are going in a plastic storage box ready for when I need them and I want you to be able to see it like that and the dangles all underneath so then I'm going to put a blob of glue there and then pop that over the top and now can you see, you can see that, you can see this, you can see the little gold star, the bow and all the dangles, everything kind of sits well and that's not going to move now because it's got that hot glue but it still works really well then, but the handles still work really well as well. Get your closure, take that off, you got a lovely big gift bag. I love how roomy this is, it really well fits them, you know, perfect for perfumes and um, lots of toiletries, they're all the kind of things that we like to give at Christmas but um, no, I'm really really pleased with how that's turned out. I'll just bring in the other one here as well, so again if you do want to have handles like this i just done a plait, simple plait, just three strands of ribbon and again you can see I've done that exactly the same way and you've got the dangles underneath as well so yeah I think they both look really nice. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you like my unusual washed gift bags I think they're really cool so thank you for watching please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye